Hello guys and this is Scott here and today we're doing the second Christmas 2016 historic video and in this one we're having a look at the winter of 62-63 you know the holy grail of cold winters in this country um, now as I'm sure you're aware it is a very cold winter and in fact it's the coldest winter since uh, 1740 you know can you believe you know so a phenomenally cold weather event um, and as I said, it's often regarded as the holy grail of winters in this country. And so I thought, since it's now Christmas Eve when we're uploading this, it'd be um, a good time to have a look at it. Uh, so just before I get started, I'd just like to say that uh, many of the facts and figures that you see in this video come from the website of Professor Trevor Harley. Um, Trevor Harley has um, a fantastic resource of information um, going back to the start of the 1900s and even smaller fragments of information going back further than that. So that's an excellent resource. Um, and also the charts that you see in this uh, video come from the historical archive at wettercentral.d. Uh, they have an archive of charts going back to January 1871. So as always, if you want to request a historic video, you can pick anything from the start of 1871. Right, so let's get on with the winter of 62-63. Uh, so we're going to start off on the 8th of November 1962 uh, because we perhaps get a little bit of a teaser of what's to come a bit later on. Uh, so we start off there on the 8th of November um, and as we move through into the 9th, you can see that actually we actually set up this little bit of an easterly over the country. Um, and also notice we've got high pressure over Scandinavia. Uh, so at this early stage in the season, uh, we do actually manage to pull off a bit of a cold spell. And that goes through into the 10th um, and the 11th of November, actually. Quite um, a significant Scandinavian high there. Um, and we're actually bringing in some pretty chilly air off the east. Um, and as we go through into the 12th, you can see that we actually... Um, get a little bit of a weather system coming through. That weather system is um, represented by those greener colours there. Um, and actually this brings some snow into the northern half of the country uh, during the 12th of November. Um, and snow was as far south as Yorkshire to lower levels. Uh, so you know, just perhaps little hints at this stage that it was going to be a very different winter to what we're normally used to. Uh, so as we go through the 13th um, and into the 14th of November, uh, that high pressure that was over Scandinavia then splits in two um, and moves out into the Atlantic and we start to bring low pressure back. Uh, so just a very brief late autumn cold snap, but you know perhaps just small hints of what was going to come a bit later on. Uh, so now we're going to go forward to the 1st of December 1962. Um, and December 62 was a cold month. and It has a central England temperature of 1.8 Celsius. Um, it was a cold month, as I said, but, you know, nothing as to what was going to come later on. But certainly at this stage, um, some pretty chilly weather came in December 62. So there we are on the 1st of December, and as you can see, we've actually got this area of high pressure sat over the country. Uh, now at this stage, this is, you know, bringing quite hard overnight frosts um, and pretty chilly days. Uh, but as we go through the 2nd and into the 3rd, that um, area of high pressure actually holds sway. Um, and this actually brings the last great smog uh, to parts of London and the South East. Um, as you can see how wide the isobars are there, there's pretty much no wind at all. So it just allows, you know, air pollutants and particulates to build up in the atmosphere. And of course you have to remember that 1962 was before the Clean Air Act really kicked in. Uh, so there was some dreadful, dreadful quality air that was uh, recorded through the 3rd and into the 4th of December 1962. Um, in fact, the Great Smog actually reached its worst on the 4th of December. Um, and there was quite a few people dying from this. Um, there was quite a lot of pollution in the air, you know. Really sort of dirty air that was, you know, hazy and foggy to look through. So 
pretty a pretty disgusting atmosphere um, at this stage and also a very dangerous one as well. Um, but this was the, the last of these great smogs. And then as we move through into the 5th of December, uh, that smog hangs on. But as we go through the 6th and into the 7th, you can see that we start to then bring this area of low pressure in off the Atlantic. Um, and so what this does is this brings fresher winds. Um, and as we go through into the 8th, you can see the isobars tighten. Um, and this brings uh, some slightly milder weather. Uh, but more importantly, it clears away all of that smog. Um, but really, the milder weather doesn't last long at all, because as we go through the 9th um, and into the 10th of December, uh, you can see that actually the high pressure actually moves a little bit further into the Atlantic. Uh, so what this does is allows this deep area of low pressure to move to the north, uh, which brings gales and severe gales um, at this point. Um, but what it does is it just allows again some colder air to be brought down from the northwest. Um, so again, you know, not overly cold at this stage, but you know, certainly feeling quite seasonable for the time of year. And again, perhaps providing small hints of where the rest of the winter was going to go. And then that pattern pretty much carries on as we go through the 11th um, and into the 12th of December. In fact, there was some snow again on the 12th of December 1962 for northern areas. As you can see, actually, behind that low pressure system, the winds are going into the north. So again, we're bringing down a little bit of a cold plunge. Um, and actually, I'm not going to show any uh, charts for the upper air temperatures in this video, because actually, they wasn't all that remarkable. Uh, generally, we just keep sort of moderately cold air over the country, so upper air temperatures of minus six, minus seven degrees. Um, but what often happens in the case in winter is the longer you keep those upper air temperatures over the country, the, the colder and colder it gets at the surface. Um, so it's exactly the same in summer, um, but really that was what caused this winter to be so cold. We just had, you know, genuine cold air um, in the upper atmosphere that just hung on for most of the winter and just allowed the surface to get colder and colder. And of course, the upper air temperatures there are cold enough for snow. So that, you know, explains why the winter was also quite a snowy winter. Um, and as we go into the 13th, again, we keep those snow showers over from the 12th, but really Again, the winds are coming down from the northerly quarter, so again, feeling very chilly and actually quite raw in some strong winds there. Um, and as we go through the 14th and into the 15th of December, again, we bring another area of low pressure in off the Atlantic. But again, just notice how the orientation of the jet stream there is keeping the winds in from a northwesterly direction. You know, so the high pressure is a bit further out into the Atlantic um, and low pressure is generally to the north and northeast of the country. So it's allowing chillier air into the country. You know, so fairly coldish days and quite cold nights under this as well. Um, and we stay the same really into the 16th. In fact, we get a very severe gale there on the 16th of December. Uh, gusts of 80, 90 miles an hour across northern ha northern areas of the country. Um, and again, through the 17th and the 18th of December, we keep those northwesterly winds and through on into the 19th and the 20th of December. And then as we go through the, into the 21st of December, this was actually quite a famous day. Uh, this was Friday the 21st of December 1962. And this was the day that the great freeze really began to set up. Um, because as you can see, we've got an area of high pressure starting to build over Scandinavia. And in fact, during the day on the 21st, um, in lighter winds over the country, we actually had some dense fog patches, which uh, really restricted the temperatures. And as we go through into the 22nd, you can see that that area of high pressure that was to the south of the country now builds through the UK and starts to connect up with that area of high pressure over Scandinavia. So now we're starting to set up 
the phenomenal cold spell that was going to be the winter of 62-63. Um, and in fact, a remarkable statistic from this date is that every day from this um, until the 4th of March, um, there was a hard frost at least somewhere in the country. You know, so for just out for almost 70 days, 71 days, uh, there was a hard overnight frost somewhere in the country. You know, again, just emphasising really how exceptional this winter was. Um, and as we go through into the 23rd of December, now you can see that that Scandinavian high has quickly been inflated by warm air advection there. And now it's starting to drag in much colder air from the east. So now the winter is definitely showing its colours um, and it's definitely showing its hand. Um, and this is... You know, from this point now, the winter just hung on until the beginning of spring. Um, very remarkably, again, just showing what an incredible winter this was. Uh, into Christmas Eve, and again, you know, generally no change. We just keep an area of high pressure around the country. So Christmas Eve was a cold and frosty day um, and with patches of fog, you know, really subdued temperatures on this day. You know, many places not getting above freezing. Um, and it was the same into Christmas Day as well. So there's the chart for Christmas Day 1962. Um, but there the high pressure is starting to build through the country. And as you can see, it's starting to retrogress up towards Greenland. You can see um, 1,060 millibars starting to build over Greenland there. Um, and this is retrogressioning. And, you know, I always have to assume that you're watching these for the first time. Uh, retrogression is basically when you get the opposite of the zonal flow. Uh, so weather systems, that's both lows and highs, will move across the Atlantic from west to east. So, you know, they will move off the Canadian seaboard across the Atlantic and into Western Europe. And retrogression is basically when you get the opposite of that. Um, and that's really what was happening on Christmas Day. Um, and as we go into Boxing Day, you can see that that high pressure has now jumped up to a Greenland and then now put the country under a cold northerly flow that's actually stretching all the way up to the pole there. Um, and also Boxing Day 1962 uh, was a famous day. This is um, a historic day in fact because as you can see by that kink in the isobars over the country there we had a weather system descending down across the country and this brought heavy snow to a very wide portion uh, throughout the hours of Boxing Day. Um, and in fact, uh, snow fell up to 18 inches uh, south of the Thames, you know, so actually southern areas got the worst of this. Um, and what was remarkable is that the snow that fell on this day was then to lie across southern areas and lowland areas until the 4th of March. So for 67 days on the trot, uh, southern areas had um, most of the UK had a blanket of snow so really you know another outstanding statistic and again you know when people go on about the winter you know every year being like the winter 62 you know they really don't realize actually how incredible and exceptional this winter was uh, you know this is predicted to be a once in 250 year event uh, so you know, they're really just full of rubbish, to be honest. You know, we're probably not going to see this in our lifetimes ever again. Um, and, of course, if you're younger like me, you know, we've never seen a, you've never seen a winter like this. And we probably never will, to be honest. That's just how these things work. But when the papers go on about these phenomenal cold spells, they're, they're honestly full of absolute crap, if you want my all honesty. Uh, but... Yeah, as we go in uh, on Boxing Day, we have that band of snow descending south. And as we go into the 27th, we then just set up a very cold and clear pattern. So, you know, the, the snow moves away on the 27th and we get some very cold air piling in from the northeast east there. Um, into the 28th, and again, we get another snow event for southern areas. So, again, some more snow moves up from that low pressure to the south. By this point, you know, the, the North Atlantic Oscillation is through the floor, you know, it's completely well and truly negative, you know. And this was, as I said, this was just locked in now until the spring. 
Um, into the 29th, again, there's no change. We keep some snow showers moving in from the east uh, into the 30th um, and into New Year's Eve. Again, we get some more snow in the south throughout the 30th and into the New Year's Eve of 1962. And that takes us into January 1963. And January 1963 is the holy grail of cold winter months in this country. It has an incredible central England temperature of minus 2.1 Celsius, which makes it the fifth coldest January, and in fact the fifth coldest month on record. Um, and as I say about the charts going back to 1871, this is the coldest month that I can show you. Um, you know, we may one day get a colder month, but as of now, this is the coldest month that I can show you the charts for. So really, you know, quite a big month is going to play out here, um, in case you, it wasn't obvious enough, to be honest. It was, as I said, you know, quite. it was also quite a dry January, I should say that, you know, generally very anti-cyclonic, but there was some big snowstorms, you know, it doesn't rule out that. But often with these cold months, is they are quite dry and it just features a high pressure around the country. Um, and as for sunshine, it was quite a cloudy month in the uh, eastern areas with that easterly wind. Uh, but for western areas, it was actually quite a sunny month. So a bit of a variation there. So as you can see, there's the chart for New Year's Day 1962. And you know, no explanation as to why it's cold. We have a bitterly, bitterly cold easterly wind blasting in across the country. Um, and a Greenland high up to 1,060 millibars, you know, so pretty self-explanatory really. We're just locked in a well and true cold pan. And that goes on into the 2nd of January 1962, 63, sorry. Um, and as we go into the 3rd, we then get this area of low pressure moving up from the south. And overnight 3rd and into the 4th of January 1963, this brings another major snowstorm in this winter. Um, for most of western and southern areas, uh, this dumps 10 to 20 centimetres. Uh, but by this time, with the strong winds from both the Boxing Day snow um, and this snowstorm itself, there's drifts now quite widely between 5 and 10 metres deep. So, just absolutely incredible snow depths and some very deep cold as well that's coming in on that easterly wind. Um, and really, uh, that snow clears away into the 5th, we just keep some snow showers, and again, we keep the easterlies into the 6th. So it's just bitterly, bitterly cold, air uh, blasting across the country from the northeast. Um, and of course, with those snow fields, we're now starting to get some very low temperatures as well. So by this point, you know, temperatures are down to minus 17, minus 18 across quite large portions of the country. So we're actually going sub-zero with the Fahrenheit as well. And just absolutely, tremendously cold winter conditions. And we carry on through the 7th and into the 8th of January. In fact, we just go quite calm and dry there on the 8th. Into the 9th and the 10th before we get some more snow moving in on the 11th of January into the south. Uh, into the 12th as well and the 13th, again, we just keep that area of high pressure in situ across the country. Um, and again, you know, I'm not going to show this, but the upper air temperatures weren't all that remarkable with this. Uh, but, you know, you have to bear in mind that on the surface, we've had fairly cold temperatures aloft. Um, and now we've got deep snow fields and calm winds, so that's just allowing, you know, some large temperature inversions, and we're getting some extremely deep cold on the surface. Um, and there's no change into the 14th and the 15th, we just keep very anti-cyclonic weather into the 16th uh, and the 17th of January 1963. Um, and overnight 17th and into the 18th of January, we actually record minus 22.2 Celsius at Braemar, which was the coldest temperature of 62, 63. You know, so some really deep cold there. I think that's about minus 10 Fahrenheit, I think. 
Uh, and again, those bitterly cold nights carry on into the 19th. And as we go through the 19th and into the 20th of January 1963, we get another big snowstorm in this month. Um, and actually, you can see how tight those isobars are. Um, in fact, we had an easterly gale on this day. Um, and actually, 99, a gust of 99 miles per hour was recorded on Great Dun Fell. And of course, this was accompanied by heavy, uh, heavy blasting snow uh, that was just blowing and terrible visibility. So, you know, it really was absolutely ridiculously cold winter temperatures, uh, winter weather, sorry. Um, and of course, actually very dangerous weather, you know, it's, it has to be pointed out, you know, a lot of people go on about, you know, wanting severe winters like this, but, you know, really some very dangerous weather in this as well. And you have to remember back in 63, we didn't have all of the modern central heating that we have nowadays. So, you know, there was quite a few people that were dying with this winter. Um, and really, it's just when you see charts like that, you can see why just easterly gales blasting across the country and just very cold air and drifting snow, you know, just no surprise why it really has become um, an infamous and um, infallible winter, really. Um, and as we go through the 21st and into the 22nd of January, again, we just keep... Um, those anti-cyclonic conditions and in fact there was actually on the 21st and into the 22nd there was um, a snow drift recorded at 25 feet at Dartmoor so you know a truly extraordinary snow drift there um, and as we go into the 23rd again we have some more very low temperatures in fact we record minus 20.6 celsius at Hereford and in fact on this day also the sea at Eastbourne was actually now frozen out to 100 metres um, and some of the major rivers in this country were now frozen over as well. So, you know, the winter just keeps getting more and more severe. Um, and as we go through the rest of January, so as we go through the 25th and into the 27th of January 1963, we pretty much just keep that area of high pressure over the country now. So... We just have deep surface cold um, and generally quite calm conditions now. So it's just clear skies during the day and then some absolutely severely cold nights as well along those snow fields. And that takes us through to the end of January. So to the 29th and the 31st of January 1963, we keep that area of high pressure around the country. You know, so really and a very famous and um, absolutely immortalised winter month there, you know, one that's certainly not going to be forgotten any time soon. Um, but the winter carries on into February as well, um, and February 63 was again another severe month with a central England temperature of minus 0 0.7 Celsius. So this was um, the only instance in the 20th century where we had a winter that had two severe winter months. You know, a severe month is when we have the central England temperature below freezing. Um, and actually, this is only one of two winters that I can show you where we had, you know, these absolutely phenomenally cold spells and these two severe months. So um, there we are on the 1st of February 63. Um, and again, there's just no change from the January. We have high pressure to the northwest um, and cold northeasterly winds coming down across the country. Um, and as we go through into the second, again, we get some more snow for southern areas into the third and the fourth of February. In fact, as we go into the early hours of the fifth of February, we again get some more very cold temperatures. Of, in fact, we record minus 17.8 uh, minus 17.8 Celsius at Caltishan Shawl in um, Norfolk. And in fact, that's a coastal town as well. So to get such a cold temperature on the coast, again, just highlighting how cold and how severe this winter was. Um, but there on the 5th, you can actually see that again, we've got 
another area of low pressure winding up in the Atlantic. And then as we go through into the 6th of February, uh, we get another major snowstorm. And in fact, we get, um, in fact, just on this day, the, fifth, the 6th and into the 7th, uh, 1.5 metres of snow fell at Tredegar in Monmouthshire, uh, which actually makes it the deepest urbanised snow depth on record. So the deepest snow depth that's ever been recorded um, in a town or city in this country. Um, and again, you can see with those uh, tight ice bars, again, it was another blizzard. So, you know, again, just the winter doesn't relent at all. It's just staying bitterly, bitterly cold throughout this early part of February 63. Um, and that snowstorm, as I said, goes on into the 7th before by the 8th it does start to clear away. And again, we just bring the anticyclonic conditions back. So through the 9th and into the 10th of February, uh, we try to bring low pressure in off the Atlantic, but really it's just being held at bay by that blocking to the northeast of the country. Um, as we go through the 11th um, and into the 12th of February, again there's just no change. Into the 13th and on the 14th again we get another big snowstorm coming through. Um, and in fact there was actually... Quite um, curiously, there was actually a brief sort of incursion of milder air on the 14th of February, which actually meant that just for a couple of hours in uh, southern areas, temperatures actually struggled up to 1 Celsius. So, you know, there was just a very, very, very light thaw that took place on um, Valentine's Day in 1963 before, you know, on the evening, again, this next blizzard came roaring in a more heavy snow came 14th overnight the 14th and into the 15th of February 63 so again as i said the winter's just showing no signs of letting go through the 16th and into the 17th again we return back to the cold and anticyclonic conditions that have dominated the winter so far into the 18th and the 20th of February so again you know, this is where February just finishes off. We keep low pressure moving by to the south um, and blocking around to the north of the country. So through the 22nd and into the 24th, uh, we finally start to actually bring some slightly milder weather in now. Um, as you can see on the 26th, we start to bring up a bit of a southerly wind. Uh, so what this does is it just again allows another gentle thaw you know, we get cold nights, but during daytimes, you know, the temperatures are around 3 or 4 degrees. So, you know, by this point, you know, the winter is very slightly starting to ease. And that takes us into the end of February 63. Uh, so, overall, you know, it was a phenomenally cold winter. In fact, uh, the central England temperature for the whole of winter is actually minus 0.3 so, you know, an absolutely, tremendously cold winter. Uh, but all good things must come to an end, because as we got to March 63, this was when the thaw came. Uh, so on the 1st of March there, you can see we carry on with that warm southerly wind. And what it's allowing is just in the sunshine, you know, daytime temperatures are slowly getting slightly milder. You know, there's still hard frosts overnight, but... You know, temperatures now are up to sort of 7, 8, 9 degrees um, during the daylight hours. Um, and we're just very slowly starting to melt the snow in the south. Uh, through the 2nd and the 3rd of March, 63, before on the 4th of March, actually, the freeze then ends on this day. Um, in fact, this was the first day since uh, December 22nd, as you remember me mentioning, uh, that no areas actually had a frost on this day you know it was the first frostless day uh, since december and in fact this was also the day that many of the snow in lowland areas of britain actually finally melted um, and the grass finally poked through the snow so you know the winter finally draws to a close in early march uh, through the fifth um, and into the sixth we basically get a big push of southwesterly air and this actually brings temperatures up to 17 celsius in london so you know 
the winter finally breaks and actually we're left there with actually some quite pleasant weather for early spring. You know, I'm sure at the time this really was such a welcome relief to the people that had lived through this severe freeze. Uh, but yeah, and so now just before we finish off the video, of course I've got some photos to show you this winter. We couldn't end the video without showing some photos. Uh, so there's the um, first photo of this winter, which you know is the famous photo. This is often attached to um, many documents and many um, many stories of the winter of 62, 63. Um, and this is of, you know, a deep snowfield in a, I believe this is somewhere in Lancashire, you know, a true winter wonderland there, you know, just bitterly, bitterly cold um, and some very deep snow fields as well. Uh, the second photo, this is actually taken from Margate in January 1963 um, and actually you can see that basically the sea is starting to freeze there, as I said, you know, the winter is just so cold that actually most of the sea around seas around the country actually frozen and this was you know a photo of it around Margate Pier you know again just highlighting really how cold this winter was um, the third photo we're gonna have a look at this was um this was actually taken on Boxing Day in 1962 uh, this is actually a photo of a Boxing Day hunt um, and this was of course the day the famous day that the snow fell you know the snow fell on Boxing Day and was to last all the way through until um, until March, and then that's what we have there. Um, the fourth photo, of course, you know, this again I think was taken. I think this was taken in early February. Uh, this was of some really deep snow fields. You know, cars and buses just absolutely stranded in snow drifts. You know, they must be about you know seven or eight feet deep. You know absolutely phenomenal pictures that you actually look at and you can't believe are actually from this country you know really truly extraordinary weather here that happened in this winter um, and the final photo there you can see we've got a photo of um, some people um, who are having fun out on a frozen lake I believe this is you know the ice skating and you know playing around in the snow on a frozen lake, I think this again was taken in the January by uh, Brian Powell. Um, so good photo there to Brian if you ever stumble across this video. Uh, but yeah, that's actually going to do it for this uh, historic video. And of course, you know, I hope you enjoyed this winter, this uh, video. You know, I actually really, um, I did actually put some time into this. I know it was. Um, you know, I knew this was a video where there'd be quite high demands of me. Uh, but of course, if you're old enough to remember the winter of 62, 63, I hope this has brought back some memories. Um, and if you're someone who's, um, you know, didn't live through it, I hope it's, you know, you've enjoyed this look and, you know, it's really got you inspired and your thoughts going. Uh, but of course, as it is Christmas Eve, I'd just like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Um, and as... I hope to again carry on making historic videos so as I said I wish you a Merry Christmas um, and a very prosperous New Year uh, so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon